What's up guys, new angle, same dirtbag. Also, I know, another Star Wars movie? I thought you hated Star Wars, and I do, trust me. I hate Yoda, Han Solo, Leia, Luke, Chewbacca, Jabba the Hutt, Darth Maul, Darth Vader, General. But about a month ago, after watching my fanboys video, my friend Phantom Kai was like, yo, have you ever seen the Star Wars holiday special? And I'm like, no. The only thing that's Star Wars related that I've ever watched in its entirety are both the Robot Chicken and Family Guy Star Wars specials, and even then I only watched that because they were Robot Chicken and Family Guy. So anyway, I says forget the dental plan, forget sick leave, I just want a railing. You know, one railing, right here. Yeah, I know, I've almost fallen over that thing so many times. So what'd they say? Oh, get this. They said they're worried we'd be leaning all day. But after Kai let me know about the atrocity that is the Star Wars Holiday Special and how George Lucas once said, if I had the time and a sledgehammer, I would track down every copy of that show and smash it. I said, you got my attention. And basically what this movie is about, and this is straight from Wikipedia, in the storyline that ties this special together, following the events of the original film, Chewbacca and Han Solo attempt to visit the Wookiee home planet of Kashyyyk to celebrate Life Day. And I only know how to say that because they said it in fanboys. I hate Star Also, I've never seen the first movie, so I do not know what events they are following, but a quick Google uh, YouTube search will help me out. One second. All right, so I looked up uh, Star Wars A New Hope, I think that's the first one, the ending scene, and all that happens is the big three are walking down an aisle and they get some medals. I wish I knew what those medals were for. All right, so if you like Star Wars and everything that makes Star Wars Star Wars, prepare for some disappointment. This movie would be like if they made another Fast and the Furious movie, but instead of it being about cars, they were just playing 18 holes of golf the whole time. And whenever they ask Tyrese something, they play this clip. What more do you want from me? <laughs> like I shit you not, just sit back, relax, let out a fat fucking fart, and get ready to be disappointed in Star Wars the way it was intended to be. So the movie starts out with Han Solo and Chewbacca trying to escape from whatever these things are. I'm sure they have names, but they didn't tell me. Apparently though, they're trying to make it back to Chewie's home planet in time for this thing called Life Day. And after they do that thing all y'all nerds love to see, we get that sweet title sequence. Only this one's a little different. Uh, meaning it's completely different. There's a narrator. The Star Wars Holiday Special. We have these random ass headshots. We even have a ad for General Motors as if someone watched this and was like, yeah, I need a GMC. But after that weird ass opening, we end up at the house Chewbacca grew up in. And you know how in the regular movies, Chewbacca was the only one we couldn't understand? Just imagine the exact opposite of that. <laughs> And mind you, there are no subtitles, so we're just supposed to know, like, act like we know what the fuck this means. And not only that, look at how they make his dad look. He looks like Chewbacca got AIDS and never got it treated. They then ask their son to do what looks like laundry. This one looks like the only one who wears clothes, so I don't know. When they get outside though, he's like, hey yo, what even is life? And then contemplates it while tight roping this hand railing. And if you think that leads to anything, it doesn't. All he does is take a few steps and then we get sent back to the AIDS monkey and his wife as they admire a picture of their sexy ass son awaiting his arrival. <laughs> And when their son comes back from not doing laundry, they take him to this table, and I swear to shit, some Cirque du Soleil nonsense starts happening for no reason. And that goes on for three minutes and does absolutely nothing to the storyline. I say that because right after they go over to this computer and start talking to Luke, who looks way gayer than I ever thought he did. Where's Chewbacca? <laughs> Time. But after Luke has a sick vape sesh with R2, they turn the channel and end up at some home shopping network. I've come to look around your shop. Oh, good, good, good. Look around. Browse around. Make yourself the home. As you can see, I've got just about everything a man or Wookiee would want. And I have no idea why they added this in or what this had to do with 
this being a holiday, but we literally just watched some guy look around, pick something, not pay for it, and then this dude just starts talking to himself. I don't like embarrassing people. I don't like being embarrassed myself. That's why I don't like to embarrass people. I just said that. We then get this random cutscene that I'm pretty sure was taken from the original movie, and they just dubbed over some new lines like y'all weren't gonna notice. We ordered a blockade and curfew and started a search operation. It's just a matter of time before we find the rebels. I want the rebels located and identified, if it means searching every household in the system. After we go back to the house and watch as the mom tries to cook whatever this lady on her TV is making. Fun fact, this lady is actually this guy. Popular holiday favorite, the Bantha Rump. But after the mom realizes that she doesn't have four hands and hasn't even evolved past the primate stage, she's like, fuck it, and puts the pot down and doesn't feed anyone. And again, this has nothing to do with the storyline. We then move to a different part of the house, and now the salesman is there and is like, hey, yo, you want to try on this sick virtual reality helmet? And when he puts it on, instead of getting some sweet animated Star Wars sequence, we get this. If we could only bend this minute infinitely. And then, right after the song ends, we go back to Han Solo and Chewbacca trying to make it home. At this point, I just say fuck it and land anywhere, but he's like, no, we're gonna get you hairy son of- we're gonna get you hairy son of a bitch home, you, ha you hairy son of a bitch. Meanwhile, we go back home again, and apparently, someone has violated their parole because the police are there, and they mean business. And by business, I mean getting shown another music video. Okay, okay. The song is better than the first one, but it has no business being in a Star Wars movie. The police then get taken upstairs while the little AIDS baby watches a Star Wars cartoon. And I don't want to spoil it for all you Star Wars fans, but I do want to point out that every character looks okay, except for Han Solo. What happened? I don't know. Well, somebody must know something. Why does he look like that? Why does he look Asian? That's not a bad thing, but he's not Asian. But after that cartoon ends, the kid goes upstairs and tries to repair this transmitter in a very drawn out scene that is 90% just this. But now let's get started, shall we? Why is he fixing a transmitter and why are we not seeing Han Solo and Chewbacca come home? The people in this house are basically us now. We're all just waiting for Chewbacca to come home. But guess what? Instead of that happening, some of these drones, I think, start talking next to a computer and another music video starts playing. Just one more chance, Just one more chance, And this song kind of slaps. You can tell it's the ending because of what she's singing about. And... Uh, you know what? I'll just leave- I'll just let it play for as long as I think before I can get a copyright claim. It's not the end, friend. If you're a friend, friend. Just kidding. I'm not gonna take any chances. It was, it was still too long. But finally, after that song, somehow Han Solo and Chewbacca finally made it home. And when they do, they end up running into this droid who is chasing the little guy. And after Han Solo breaks this man's ankles right off the balcony, they all head inside and like and are like, yeah, this yeah, the kid didn't definitely didn't see someone fall to their death. Merry Christmas. And after everyone leaves, this movie leaves us with more questions than it does answers. I mean, what are their names? Why are they walking into a sun? How do they have computers, but still live in a fucking treehouse? It's no wonder George Lucas wanted all these movies destroyed. This makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Like, this movie is so dragged on, I don't even know why I watched the whole thing. And it wasn't just me, there were a couple other people in the VC watching this with me. And I'm sorry. But yeah, that was the Star Wars Holiday Special. I don't recommend it at all. And if you're going to watch it, don't watch it at night because you will fall asleep. I don't- I didn't. But the other people in the VC didn't answer me after the movie was over. So I'm assuming they died.
And also, one more thing before I end the video, I know y'all are tired of me talking about Black the Anime, but I'm also tired of them doing stupid shit. So just to spare you guys any more 30 minute videos, uh, here I'm gonna do this. At the end of every other video, I'm gonna let y'all know some of the messed up things the people on Black the Anime have been doing leading up to their season 2. Starting with getting an 8th grader to buy their OnlyFans. These idiots really thought posting this on their server filled with 95% underage kids was a good idea. Not only that, they told people that they'd get a custom role if they bought something from their OnlyFans. And like I said, an 8th grader bought it. And when I called them out, they're like, well, we told her not to buy anything else, and it's not our fault what she buys. And then I even asked the girl who bought it, what the fuck were you thinking? What, you bought an OnlyFans in 8th grade? And she's like, you act like I'm gonna watch any of it. And then she's like, well, I just wanted to support the anime and give money to them directly. And I'm like, you know they have a website with merch on it. There's no reason you, an 8th grader, should be making an OnlyFans account to give them money. And that's just one thing. I could make a whole video on the stupid shit they've done in these past two days, but that's what they want. They don't care that they had an 8th grader and probably some other underage kids buy their OnlyFans, and they don't care that they're bringing underage girls to talk with an actual pedophile. You know who you are. Also, someone tried to ban everyone on my Discord, but I'm too fast for them. So if you got banned, I left a link down below. You can rejoin if you want, you feel me? But yeah, black the anime. If you're an underage girl, 